Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Hugh Pagenstecker and I'm here with Rosa McKenzie. Uh, we're here to talk about her TV pilot project called The Rooms, which she, she is now um, has a Kickstarter campaign for. So make sure to check that out. Woo! We're here at Arrowwood on Sandy, tasting some mocktails and talking about her mockumentary. So thanks Yay! for tuning in. For coming. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Yeah. It's... And thanks for meeting me at Arrowwood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who knew that they had such an extensive mocktail list? Yeah. What uh, mocktail did you get? Um, I got the delicious. There's nice. some ginger beer and grapefruit and a shrub. A shrub. Oh, there's a shrub. It's so Pacific Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> It's very good. Yes, I think mine has like the tropical view. It's like pineapple juice, orange juice, coconut, oh, water, yeah. just all the good stuff. Mm -hmm. you know? We're so, being very healthy with yeah. our mocktails. Yes. So you're um, you're uh, producing a project, a TV pilot mm -hmm. called The Rooms. Yes. Um, that's super exciting. Yeah. Uh, tell me about it. Like, what's the what's the plot? Who's the, who's the protagonist? Yeah. So the Rooms is a mockumentary set in an AA meeting, essentially. So think um, The Office in 12-step recovery. So All that's right. kind of the premise. Um, it is based on my own experience getting sober. Uh, I used AA to get sober. Not everybody does. It's not for everybody, <laughs> but it's the way that it worked for me. Um, so it's kind of big, like there's a, there's two pro like main protagonists. There's like a, a younger woman who's getting sober. She's in her twenties. She's a disaster. She's like drunk throughout the whole episode. Like she is not really willing to acknowledge that she has a problem. And, and she like goes to AA to try and like um, get her boyfriend back because her boyfriend's threatening to leave her if she doesn't quit drinking. Um, and then uh, there is a, the secretary of the meeting. So it's like based in this like kind of AA world and it's AA meeting. Um, there's a, if you're not familiar with the way that that works, there's always a secretary of, a, of the meeting. And that's kind of the person who runs the show. And you know, um, the, so that woman's name is Joan and she is super anal retentive. She is very um, kind of like traditional, like you have to do AA in a certain way. Um, and she's very controlling. So it's like kind of seeing those two play off of each other and Joan is trying to find a sponsee in the, in, in the pilot and wants Madison, Madison's the uh, young woman's name. So it's yeah. Joan and Madison. She wants to uh, sponsee Madison and Madison's kind of like, no thanks, tries to find her own way through it, you know. Nice. Yeah. yeah well, it sounds super interesting. Yeah. I like how it's like takes a very serious topic. Mm -hmm. um, and then makes it kind of like lighthearted and uh, comical, right? Because it's like it's a it's a comedy as well, right? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. It yeah. is very yeah. They, we yes, thank you. Um, I love the idea of taking something that's like really uh, hard for people to talk about and like kind of making it uh, lighter and like more, you know, just relatable. Because like the thing it, for me is that when you when you see um, recovery and addiction portrayed in mainstream media, it's always so depressing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you see the one main character and they're like taking their coin or they're, they're, they just relapse and it's just like this super dramatic, you know, monologue and uh, you know. They're and, always like, are you gonna share it this week? They're like, no. It's like, right. this is yeah. your 20th time attending. <laughs> you haven't shared it once yet. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, Rosa, I think I met you, uh, I, think, I feel like it was during the pandemic. We we're both doing like open mic comedy yeah. um, on Zoom even, potentially. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, I've, I've like, you know, definitely seen and uh, met you in senior comedy throughout oh. Portland mm -hmm. and over the last couple of years. I'm curious, how has your experience and like in the Portland comedy scene and the community here kind of affected and influenced uh, the script and project? Yeah, I would say that it's influenced it a lot. So comedy, like in in terms of feeling like 
free to write whatever I want, right? Mm -hmm. So I started doing comedy and it felt like, um, you know, and I'm still kind of like exploring who I am and my, like who I am on stage and like what I want to talk about and whatever. But since I started doing comedy, I've talked about being in recovery. I've talked about like sobriety or whatever. Um, so it's the, you know, the mechanics of it, mm -hmm. joke writing for the stage has definitely influenced the script in a positive way. Cause it's like, it's taught me how to like make punchy jokes. Right. Yeah. Um, and then also the practice of like performing and, you know, writing it's, influenced the project in like um helping me find like an authentic voice mm -hmm. you know yeah. uh and like writing from my heart and you know and that kind of kind of thing because it like comedy it, like stand-up has given me this like opportunity to really try and find my voice you know and it's like as you know it's like really challenging i think it's like i think that we could say that stand-up comedy is harder than writing scripts it's a very yeah, because challenging medium you're dealing with like the whole room of that like uh, that yeah. play, like all the audiences is almost yeah. like a part of that experience as well yeah and, and, it, and it can be it can hurt oh yeah it yeah. hurt because like the, because you could write um, oh yeah at, maybe like not the best joke on a script but you don't you don't feel the bomb at that moment you know you just like maybe show it to some exactly colleagues right. or read it a couple right. weeks later and then decide to rewrite it yeah exactly right learn so. from your previous projects <laughs> um speaking of previous projects you're yeah. you're uh, you're in filmmaking currently right is this your yeah. first pilot or what's your experience like in the filmmaking industry in portland um so I started working in film about six years ago and I started working in really low budget independent films, um, like working for free as you do when you're trying to get a foot in the door. Um, and then I started working at Nike in their uh, production department. I did that for about a year. And then it, that was kind of like before the uh, pandemic and then the pandemic happened and I thought, well, that's it for production. I better switch jobs. So I was thinking about going into like real estate or I thought about becoming a funeral director. I was like, I don't know, what can I do? Those are all <laughs> sound way worse than being a funeral director. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, I think being a funeral director would be cool. Um, anyway, uh, so when production came back after the pandemic, I was invited to work on a TBS show called Chad. Mm -hmm. So I got to do that and then that turned into a uh, Hulu show called Shrill, and then that turned into a movie for Sony, and then I went to Charlotte, uh, North Carolina, and worked there, and then um, Philadelphia, and then Boston. So I've been doing, like, since COVID kind of opened up a job opportunity for um, some people like me uh, to, like, come in and, and uh, manage their, like, health and safety department. So, like, the... Um, studios and like they have all these uh, then the unions have all these protocols and rules and like how to run productions in a pandemic and mm -hmm. i was the one who's like managing that and like uh hiring uh, the teams and whatever so i was like still like i was involved in the production i was Very working on set yeah, i yeah. was yeah. i mean but it was just like my own kind of department um just whatever yeah. whatever they could you, they needed you to do it yeah time, basically yeah, yeah. So, which is great. And it was, and allowed me um, the, you know, opportunities to go across the country and work on like major features that you will have heard of when they come out. <laughs> One is coming out soon. It's called, um, Are You There God? It's Me Margaret, which is a Judy Bloom book. And I got to work on that. Um, so that'll be cool. That's so exciting. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, so this, uh, you know, I know this is going to light part of comedy, but it takes place, um, you know, in AA meetings mm -hmm. and deals with sobriety, something that, you know, you've been working on for like the past like nine or so years. Um, would you say there's like maybe a, a, like a moral uh, to this project or any sort of, I don't know, maybe message you might have for people that, mm -hmm. that uh, are curious about sobriety or is this just sure. more just your own experience and having fun with it? Yes, I think it's more my experience in having fun with it. I think that it becomes, there's a danger to trying to like have a message about, you know, oh, I used AA and like, therefore you should use AA or like, this is the way that you should do it because I did it that way. Like, no, 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 no. no <laughs> I really yeah. don't want people to think that. Everyone um, has their own journey. Everyone has their own journey. Yeah. And I think 
you know, uh, harm reduction is really important if you're uh, struggling and then you want to like drink less or like use heroin less or whatever, like that could be a great way to start, you know? Um, so I definitely don't want to be like a representative or like speak about anything aside from my own experience. So that's, I mean, I, I would say that if people were curious about getting sober, there are, there's so much information out there. There's, it doesn't have to be AA. There's like smart recovery. There's like, if you don't have a family member or friend in your circle, I would be shocked, you know, <laughs> that like has been sober or has tried sobriety or something. There's just like, yeah. yeah. There's so much resources. And, yeah, so yeah. many resources out there. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so I'm sorry, do you have a question? Uh, well, I wanted to go back to the question about um, uh, how stand up comedy has influenced this because I wanted to give a shout out to um, the comics who have helped me on the script. So, writing the script has like been a journey. I've been, I've uh, wrote the first version just over a year ago. And since I got back to town, I've had a couple of writers rooms where uh, comics have like come over and we're just like punching up the script and, and working on it to like improve character, story, jokes, like whatever. So that's been really important to like this, um, new to the newest yeah. version and I, I saw a list on your instagram of some really funny local amazing comics yeah, so yeah, yeah. Who, who are they um so, so julia corral but, um noah watson uh sam whiteley uh ben harkins cam strong uh i think though i think i got everybody yeah yeah that's a lot of the movie yeah. <laughs> yeah a bunch of killers and, yeah and they're like so much diverse comedy styles in, the, in that group of people too. totally it's yeah really awesome. yeah that's been my favorite part has been the writers rooms like having all these people together you know pitching ideas and like there's no such thing as a bad idea we throw out every you know say whatever you want and then whatever sticks you know and it's cool like i have the ultimate control everyone give their their opinion yeah, and then at the end I'm like, yeah, exactly. each. I'm like okay. and then i edit it the, you know and create the final product so yeah and yeah. just a little other kind of comedy community plug that's kind of like just i for it to the side it's like i, I discovered this far arrowwood because there's a weekly comedy open mic here every wednesday then that brent lowry hosts that thing at 8 p.m so if you're ever into comedy you know you can you come here and get some mocktails, some oh, cocktails, yeah. some food. Check it out. This is a really neat place, and we I'll appreciate. I'll be here on Wednesday to I'll do some here. comedy. I just live here. I'm here all the time. <laughs> come say hi. This is my table. Don't take my table. <laughs> um, I, I have a couple more questions. One more yeah. is like, what is what's like this project like? All right, what's the best case scenario for this project? For you? Like, oh, okay. How, what, dream. We're, we're talking like dreams, dreams. and there's yeah. like okay. Like, where would you want it to be viewed? Like, yeah. yeah, okay, so what, like, the dream would be I finish the script, I finish the, um, the shooting the pilot, we mm. edit it, it looks beautiful. Um, I moved to, I'm planning on moving to LA uh, after I leave, or after I wrap up the project. And then uh, I get a manager and I say, hey, look, I made, I wrote the script and like we made it and they, they say, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> we have to give you so much money to make it. Um, and then it streams on any, you know, play. I don't really care. I just want a lot of money to like make it and have all the creative control. Awesome. I yeah, <laughs> well, that's, that's the dream, that's the dream. Yeah. And uh, you're getting closer to it every day. <laughs> and one of the main things right now that, that is like the, one of the purposes of this video is to promote Kickstarter that you're yes, doing. Yes. Uh, deadline is uh, February 20th. Yeah. Um, how can people support this project and also kind of keep in the loop of like, you know, what's going on with it? Yeah. So I am trying to keep up on my um, social media platform I, on Instagram. You can follow me at the raddest. Maybe you can. And I will link, yeah, yeah, I'll link yeah. the Kickstarter, her social media, everything yeah. in the description of this video. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and the Kickstarter, if you go to kickstarter.com and you put in the rooms, it'll mm -hmm. pop up. You can also get a link on my bio and Instagram. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Rose McKenzie. So if you um, donate, then you will be part of our like backer list and then you'll get consistent updates. Um, but I'm also trying to update as much as I can on social media. Nice. Yeah, I'm not the best at it, but I am trying. Yeah, this this like project will just be like another uh, kind of motivator to you know keep people. I don't know, just like work on your social media or whatever. Keep right. People informed. Yeah. Um, well, I'm super excited for you. Uh, Thank it's you. always really cool seeing 
just people like go after their passions, you know, build something from scratch and put them, themselves out there creatively. So thank you. You know, bravo. I want to just wish you the best of luck on, on the rooms because yeah. I just really hope to see it someday. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys give us all of your money so we yes. can make it. <laughs> give, give Rosa your money. Yay. <laughs> hey, cheers. Cheers, man. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Are you a big mocktail kind of I've, I've tried them a couple of times here. Oh, really? uh, I wouldn't say a connoisseur, but this is the one place that stuck out to me uh, because I come to the open mic that has like a uh, menu specifically for mocktails. Yeah. Otherwise, if I order them, I'm just like customizing my own. Right. You know? like, yeah, the worst thing about not drinking to go to a bar is go and you say, oh, hey, can I get something non alcoholic? And they're like, oh, sure, let me. Because I make something and you take me. Every time, without fail, it is cranberry juice.